Dr. Paul Mason, the liver, fructose, carbs, dry fatty liver, which, with oxidized oils, drives insulin resistance. If I had to pick a causative mechanism, a root cause, I think it has to come back to the liver. And some of the other justifications, we know the toxic effects of fructose in the liver. Um, I mean, and there's several reasons for this. It's because the fructose cannot be stored as glycogen. It doesn't have that, that blow off valve, if you will, where you can actually take a certain amount of it out of the equation. Where you have fructose, it's going to be processed um, metabolically by the liver. And if you exceed the processing capacity, then you, you stimulate de novo lipogenesis and fat formation in the liver. But the other line of evidence, which I find really interesting, is the fact that when we have oxidized oils, these oxidized oils will directly damage the liver and they appear to directly contribute to insulin resistance as well. And so that's actually, that's not an effect that's happening in the periphery, uh, the subcutaneous fatty tissues or anything at all like that. Um, and, you know, as we understand more and more about these other, you know, fancy chemicals like retinol binding protein four and these kind of things, and we've got these electron micrographs of, you know, oxidation damage in the livers of, of rodents. Um, I think that the data is now becoming uh, much more clear that it, the liver is the organ that we have to be looking after. But the beautiful thing is the fact that you lose around the organs and the, the stuff within the liver, that is fat that disappears very quickly uh, when you when when you go on a healthy diet and lose weight so even if you start out at 120 kilograms and you lose 10 kilograms you're still quite overweight but i can promise you there's a very good chance that you well you know if you're not metabolically healthy you will be on your way to being metabolically healthy if we were to measure things like insulin resistance and glucose levels it only takes a, uh, a rather modest amount of weight loss for people to start getting these metabolic gains and I don't know if you concur, but my feeling is it's all about the liver. We know that exercise is really terrible for losing weight, but when we do these DEXA scans on people, body composition scans, what we do see is a redistribution of fat. Mm. So we actually know that exercise, absolutely. Now, while I you know, make the term, you can't outrun a bad diet for weight loss, it's absolutely rubbish. But for metabolic health, exercise is remarkable. And let's be fair, if it wasn't for exercise, you know, well, all of our athletes, who by definition are exercising, might be diabetic much earlier. So we have guys like uh, Tim Noakes, who was on an incredibly high carb diet, you know, he was the inventor of these energy gels. You know, he, 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 uh, he knew more about carb loading than anybody. Yeah. Um, and he probably did it better than anybody as well. Um, he would have probably turned up as a type two diabetic decades earlier, were it not for his marathon runnings. Dr. Tim Noakes prominent South African scientist and marathon runner, over 70 completed marathons and ultra marathons. Originally was pro-carb loading as a means of improving performance. Later, after being diagnosed as a type two diabetic, he researched nutrition science for athletes and changed to recommending low carb diets as the best approach. There's two other pieces of evidence that would point to it being more hepatic driven rather than subcutaneous fat driven. And that's the concept of TOFI, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. We see these people who are quite lean looking and yet they're metabolically unhealthy when we measure their insulin levels and their glucose. And what is the root cause of insulin resistance? Fructose has a toxic effect on the liver. It cannot be stored in liver as glycogen. It has to be processed metabolically by the liver. If the liver's capacity is exceeded, then it stimulates de novo lipogenesis, which forms fat in the liver. Oxidized oils directly damage the liver and directly contribute to insulin resistance. Retinol binding protein 4, oxidation damage to livers and animals, all these data point to the liver as a key organ behind insulin resistance. The good news, the fat in the liver and around the visceral organs is the first to be lost when we go on a healthy diet and lose weight. For example, if you start at 120 kilograms, 
265 pounds and lose 10 kilograms, you may consider yourself still overweight, but you're on the way to being metabolically healthy, which means insulin sensitive, lower glucose levels. What about exercise? We know that exercise alone is a terrible way to try to lose weight. But, Dr. Mason reminds us, DEXA scanning shows that exercise redistributes fat and improves our metabolic health. Athletes on a high-carb diet would likely be diabetic much sooner without their extreme exercising. For example, Dr. Tim Noakes, a world-famous carb-loading runner, would have become type 2 diabetic decades sooner than he did without his exercising. Dr. Tim Noakes, prominent South African scientist and marathon runner, over 70 completed marathons and ultramarathons, originally was pro-carb loading as a means of improving performance. Later, after being diagnosed as a type 2 diabetic, he researched nutrition science for athletes and changed to recommending low-carb diets as the best approach. Insulin resistance is driven by the liver or visceral fat rather than subcutaneous fat. TOFI, thin outside but fat inside, is where you appear to be healthy but insulin resistant and high glucose. You may have fatty liver but not subcutaneous fat and you may have low visceral fat, but you're still at high risk for diabetes, stroke, many types of cancer, skin problems.